and tan and young and lovely. On this episode of Dish Net, we're at Baku's African restaurant. And I'm here with my friends. They're going to give me some of their opinions on the food. It's a Nigerian restaurant. We're here with Lakia Stanton. Hello. And Chris, tell, about, tell, tell us a little bit about you guys. Well, I am actually a teacher by profession, but I also work in entertainment as well, and I'm here to enjoy some good African cuisine. I'm a production assistant at WWLP, and I have my own public access show called What's the 413, and I'm hungry. I'm happy to be here. That basically sums it up. <laughs> now, one of the things that I'm noticing that's interesting on this menu is that a lot of the foods on this menu kind of mesh together African-American culture, Jamaican culture, you know, Caribbean, Puerto Rican culture, and I'm seeing black eyed peas, I'm seeing, you know, collard greens, but I'm thinking that they may be prepared a little bit different here, which will give us our Nigerian flair. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited about that. I definitely want to try some of the, the drinks, the mango drinks, yes. ginger beer, you guys try that as well? Yeah. I so pretty soon we're going to be having some dishes come to us and we're going to even speak with the owner who's going to give us some of her insides on how she cooks Nigerian food. Check it out. I'm here with the owner of Baku's restaurant. She's going to tell us a little bit about why she decided to start an African restaurant here in Amherst. First introduce yourself to the audience. Yes, my name is Pat Ananibako and I'm from Nigeria. I came to this country in 1983. And you came to this country in 1983. Tell me a little bit about your background and tell me a little bit about the area you're from in Nigeria. Okay, I'm from Igbo tribe, southeastern part of the country of Nigeria. And I came here to study at UMass. I joined my husband and we have five kids and in 2005, um, with encouragement f uh, from some of my customers, I opened uh, Baku's African restaurant. And do you think that there's anything about the dishes, like is there any particular signature dish that, you know, because I know obviously you have a unique cooking style. Yes. And is there anything about the particular dishes that make you unique, you know? Than of other course. Of course. Very good question. In, in well, We are colonized by British. Um, so in Nigeria, we have two types of cuisine. We have our traditional, authentic Nigerian cuisine, and we have what I describe as colonial foods. The menu is gluten-free. She decided not to include any colonial food on the menu, which tends to be wheat-based. They don't use canned food either. Everything is cooked from scratch. Using sugar is also uncommon in traditional Nigerian cooking. They usually use peanut oil, but because of the peanut allergies in the United States, she decided to substitute it for corn oil. Quickly, where did you learn to cook? Where did you get your cooking background? I grew up in a very large household. Um, I um, so I watch my mom, my aunts, my grandmother cook, and we don't use recipe and cooking in Nigeria. We just eyeball and just go by the taste and feel. No measuring. No, but I don't know how to measure, but I can tell how things you know taste now. Yeah, that's the problem. I, you know, people have been asking me to um, write cookbook, but I, I'm, I'm working on it, but it, it would be challenging because I don't cook with recipe. <laughs> Let's chow down. What are we going to try first? Let's go for the fritters. Let's go for the appetizer, right? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Everyone grab one so we can get our first impression. And this is These tomato are, sauce. That, well, yeah, seasoning, seasoning tomato sauce. Okay. What's it I called? I saw something red. Stew. Mm. We stew. call it stew. That's right, stew. Yeah. Oh, it's good. This is yeah. good. Yeah. It is a lot thicker than a tomato sauce. It does have yeah. more richness to Thank it. Thank you. Than a tomato sauce. It. Yeah. 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 Very good. What do you guys think? Yeah. Love it. I really like the um, the, to, the the stew. The stew. Yeah. And how it actually contrasts with the with the black eyed, the black guy. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it tastes a little like. My name is um the stew like my name for potatoes and all that. Oh yeah. Like, like it's what? a foundation of like a stew with potatoes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. And then you bread you bread the mm -hmm. black eyed peas? No, how? you know, we get that question all the time. No breading at all. Really? No breading. Yeah. So what do you use oh, to create? It's that? just black eyed peas. You soak it, you remove the uh, skin, mm -hmm. and then put it through a blender, really pour it. That's the trick. And then you add onions, mm -hmm. salt to taste, and deep fry. We tried a creamy sweet mango juice drink that was delightful and a great compliment to the Nigerian dishes. Baku's African restaurant has become a resource for the community as the only West African restaurant in the area. We 
really cleared our plates here. <laughs> so what do you get? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up? No. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. And a foot. You just can't see and that. Foot. Can't really see that, but you know, she is cleaning up her foot. I know, just kicked the but Pat has faced her challenges being the first African restaurant in that area. It wasn't easy getting a space. You know, I was turned down by white by white landlords who were very concerned about the um, the odor, the the smell of my food. You know, um, affecting their building or something. You know. But the woman who used to um, rent this space, MS Crepes, was moving to Boston. And a friend of mine told me to check her out, and that's how I got this place. I don't get discouraged, you know, by what people say. You know, I'm a risk taker. Um, I don't give up. You know, I don't, you know, I don't go, like, pitying myself or something. If something doesn't work, that's, you know, um, you know, my work ethics, keep trying, keep knocking, keep pushing, don't give up. But area students seem to be pretty happy to get some of this authentic cooking. For, for African students, it's, very, it's, it's a very nice place because when you're in school, you eat things with like cheese, no spice, and it's like even if it's spicy, it's never spicy enough. And, you know, it's just really exciting to have a, a Nigerian restaurant over here, you know, where you can come to and eat, feel like home. And that concludes this episode of Dishing It. Stay tuned for next time. But in the meantime, remember, food is life, food is love, food is community. Bon appetit.